Okay guys, I'm out here on the lake today. Got a pretty good cloud cover. Although the helix doesn't seem to matter so much if I'm shooting videos on the onyx, I, I like that cloud cover. So I decided to come out on the lake today and shoot some videos. It's, it's extremely windy. You may get a little bit of wind noise. I apologize for that, but can't be helped. All right, first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna, we're gonna install an HS or heading sensor antenna. And I'm gonna show you how to set it up on the Helix unit. It's very simple, uh, just, a couple of, just a couple of things you have to do and, and maybe this will help some of you get it set up without you know, pulling your hair out or you know, having to ask a thousand questions and then not really getting any answers. So let's, let's run through this real quick. One word of advice first, I, I'm not gonna do how to choose a location today because I'm by myself and you really need somebody to run the camera for you if you're doing videos like that. But one word of advice, there's a vid there are several videos out there showing how to use a magnetic compass to find the best location for your heading sensor. Now the heading sensor part of the antenna is nothing more than a magnetic compass. Okay, so obviously what would put give interference to a regular magnetic compass would give some interference to the heading sensor. So the videos themselves aren't bad. You can take a compass and find a decent location for your heading sensor. My only word of warning is do not anchor that antenna down based on what you find at home sitting in the garage or sitting in the driveway. Make sure you bring it to the lake and test it. It's not that hard to do. You can temporarily anchor it down with duct tape, electrical tape, or you know anything that will stick the antenna in place and hold it fairly securely. You're gonna see why it has to be held securely here in just a second. Okay, all right. Now, and let me, let me just show you real quick what we're dealing with here. Here's my install. It's on a test rack. That is a Humminbird HS heading sensor antenna. I ch did check it for magnetic interference because that large bolt running through the side of that mount, or you probably can't see it, but there's a large bolt running through the side of the mount. I personally run a Lowrance Point One because everything I run for my personal use uses NEMA 2000 Onyx. Gen 3 touches, Garmin units, they all use NEMA 2000. So, I, and I didn't want two heading sensor antennas on my boat, so I took my HS antenna out, put in a NEMA 2000 network, they all work the same. One word of advice here, or maybe one word of caution. On some of the videos, you'll notice mine is mounted on the uh, port side of the boat. On some of the videos, they show it being mounted back here in the corner on the starboard side of the boat. That is where my antenna was mounted for a long time when I was running my 1198, 1199 series units. Here's the problem I ran into. It worked fine there with my old outboard, but when I put this new Mercury four stroke on there that has the high output charging system, Second I cranked that motor up, had all kinds of issues with my heading sensor. So just like I would advise you to do, I went back to square one, tested every place. Every place tested fine with the compass until I cranked the motor up. Sure enough, there's all kinds of interference. Must have something to do with the new charging system. So the only place I could find in my boat was on, on the port side of the boat in the corner. Now, if you're, if you're running one in the bow, same procedure, test it. Make sure you don't have any interference. If it's your install, I would recommend running that little sucker, you know, two or three times, personally. Just held down by Velcro or, or you know, something, duct tape or something to hold it down. But anyway, all right, let's get with the install here. All right, so you've got your antenna installed. You've got it in a location you think is going to work. You've got it connected. We've got to turn on a couple of things. 
All right, first thing we need to do is go to menu, menu, and go over to setup. Now, make sure you're in advanced mode. So far, the helixes have came with advanced mode turned on. Just make sure you're in advanced mode. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, then page up. Yeah, it could have been at the bottom. Anyway, we're looking for digital readouts. All right, it says overlay. We need to turn the boxes on. So go to the left. That's going to bring up the good old-fashioned hummingbird boxes. We need to go down and we need to t select readouts. So let's go down in box three. I would put course over ground, box four, whoop, heading. Now, course over ground is the course that you are moving on based on your GPS signal. Heading is the direction your boat is pointing based on how you have your heading sensor antenna installed. And I'll show you that just in a second. Okay, with, with all of that turned on, Let's go to views and whoop, sorry about that. Got to hit exit twice. Let's go to views, page up. We want to turn on accessory test and we want to turn on GPS diagnostic view. And I'll show you why. If you page through your views, both of those views are going to pop up. You couldn't see them before. Okay, we are operating on the external GPS antenna. Doesn't necessarily find it automatically. I'm going to show you how to change it here in just a second. So we're operating on the external GPS antenna. Let's continue to go. Okay, if you're having trouble with it, this is where you check if it's connected or not. Under accessory test, that's why I turned that view on. Showing it's connected. Okay, a couple more things we need to do in the menu system. Let's go back to menu, menu. Let's go over to network. Now, I've had a couple of installs where it does not automatically find the external antenna. No big deal, as long as it shows connected in the accessory test. All you have to do is go down to network setup, go over to GPS, and come down here. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it off. There, we're back on the internal. Now we're back on the external. Okay. Go back out to the main menu for views or for your main menu and go over to navigation. Now personally, let's see. I like to turn on the heading line right here at the bottom. Turn it on. And I personally like to run, let's see, let's see, I think that might be in chart, yes. Well, nope, where is that? All right, chart orientation, sorry about that, I'm back in the nav menu. I like to run my chart orientation heads up. And the reason I like to do that is because if I throw a waypoint out and I'm fishing with a heading sensor antenna, every place the nose of that boat is pointed, it's very easy to find that waypoint. And I'll show you how that works here in just a minute. Okay, so I think we have everything turned on, so let's crank the boat up. All right, if you'll notice on your chart menu now, we have a purple line and a green line. Okay. The green line is the direction of the boat travel. And the purple line is the direction the heading sensor is pointed. Okay. So obviously, right now anyway, our boat and our GPS are, are moving basically in the same direction. So here's how you check it. Let's get us, let's get, get us a clear path here. And what I want you to pay attention to is course over ground and heading. Now, I'm turning in a circle, so remember, the green line is the GPS course over ground line. That comes from your GPS data. 
purple line comes from your heading sensor. Okay, here's the trick to this. You need to find an area where it's fairly calm, not a lot of current, needs to be protected. So what I've done is I'm going up in a cove here and you want to run approximately three to five miles an hour and you want to hold the boat in a straight path, as straight as you can. So let's bump it up to a little, little bit more speed. All right, now watch these two. Whoops, sorry. Watch the course over ground and the heading right here. With the boat in as straight a line as you can hold it, they should stay somewhere within three to, three to five degrees. That's very good because your course over ground, because it comes from GPS information, any little bobble, wind push, or anything will change that. So if you can keep that at three to five degrees, you're doing just fine. And you can see mine is easily doing that. Whoop, see the wind just pushed me. So my course over ground, but still though, it's one reason they say to do it in still conditions. It's a lot easier to check it. All right, well, we got a big wind gust. All right, so just hold your boat straight. That's all you have to do. All right, so, and if you notice on the map, the green line and the purple line, let's turn around and start out the other way. The green line and the purple line are pretty much on top of each other when you have everything set correctly. Okay, now, let me do this real quick. Let me get us started back out and let's bump the course over ground or I'm gonna bump this, uh, this stand off just a little bit, okay? All right, so let me see if I can throw that off just a touch. All right, there we go. Now look what happened. Even though I'm holding the boat straight and I didn't bump it much, <laughs> All right, even though I'm holding the boat straight, you can see that we're off more than we were. I mean, we're still pretty close, but you know, we're, we're off more than we were. We're not dead on it. All right, let me bump it back. And, and you'll know, if you have magnetic interference, you could be off five, six, seven, eight degrees when you're testing. Okay, so once again, simply speed up. And you can see we're pretty close. I probably didn't get it bumped back to where it was, but we're within, you know, the closer you can get that to dead on, but I'm gonna tell you folks, that's, that's probably not gonna happen, okay? Because wind and current and everything play such a, such a part on the course over ground. All right, so you can see we're going around the corner. And as we turn, the purple line's telling us, let me zoom out a little bit. Purple line's telling us the direction the boat is headed. The green line is telling us the direction we're headed according to the GPS information, okay? Now, if you're having to do this in the wind, you can. Just goes dead into the wind, like I'm straight into the wind. I have a lot of current here, so we're gonna. But you can see, even doing it into the wind, you can tell. If you have a lot of magnetic interference, you're gonna have eight, 10, 15 degrees off. All right, okay. Oh yeah, I promised I'd show you why this is important. All right, down here in the corner, I'm gonna turn this around. You see these waypoints, okay? Now imagine if you were fishing on the front of the boat and you were trying to cast to those waypoints. If you had a head, if you, excuse me, huh, if you have a heading sensor antenna, you can simp simply take that trolling motor and flip those, that nose of that boat around this way And right there, we are headed straight at those waypoints. Now, 
honestly let me get my heading scissor and it'll take you some time to learn how to okay right there so we're headed straight at those waypoints and if you were fishing those waypoints you can take that heading sensor line point it at those waypoints boom make cast right at it all right but that's for another video we'll have to do another video about that all right i hope that helped you uh very quickly uh let's see let's see very quickly let's go back in here and turn all this stuff off so you can see so you, you know if, if you want to turn it all back off so we just go menu menu leave your heading sensor line on we go to setup we go to whoop, down to digital readouts and if you don't want those boxes there turn them back on overlay okay so once you turn them back on overlay <coughs> excuse me your select readouts is done uh let's see we go over to views and unless you just want to leave these views on we can go uh whoop. we can go hide the accessory test so you won't see them in your view window all the time. Okay, there we go. Once again, purple lines your heading sensor. So now I know exactly where my boat is pointed no matter what speed we're going at. I hope this helped you. If you have any questions, you know, leave a comment in, in the below on my Facebook page, whichever. But hope this helped you. Later. Bye.